Hey, this is Redman coming to you live from the Let's Fest in Fort Wayne, Indiana for our brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hitchcock. Yeah, Fort Wayne. Come on, make more noise than that. Yippee doodah day. Here we are in Fort Wayne, Indiana, ladies and gentlemen. Look, Brian Redman's here, everybody. Hi. Thought this was... John Lovitz for a second. It's just good old <laughs> Brian Redband up here in a Hawaiian shirt. No better place to wear a Hawaiian shirt than a place so much like Hawaii, Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh, where we are back for the second year in a row. How about that? Fort Wayne, a hot spot. We come here. We are live at this sold-out room of 62 people. Uh, this is incredible. Packed to the gills. It's a fire hazard in here. Ladies, a lot of people know we've been doing theaters globally lately. Yeah. But today we are at uh, the Tiger Room at Welch's Ale House uh, in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Just goes to show we don't forget where we came from. You know what I mean? <laughs> we will always play to our roots. We're like a good Republican politician. You know what I mean? We're willing to go to the middle of the... That guy clap for Republicans. Very good. Heck yeah, sir. Uh, it's good to be back here in a city that still has a family video. There is a video store that operates. There are employees walking around waiting for people to come in to rent videos to take home with them. It's a real thing. If you're wondering, hey, I wonder if it's like that everywhere. Nope, that's it. Really stood out to us. Holy shit, look, a video store. It was like seeing a goddamn kangaroo or what something like that. We stopped for a second. We made sure it was real. Anyway, it's good to be here. We travel everywhere. I'm doing stand-up next weekend in Miami, Florida, and then uh, the first weekend of September in Key West. Red Band's headlining San Diego, August 17th at American Comedy Company. I'm headlining the Hollywood Improv, uh, August 23rd. And then uh, we go back to uh, Dallas, Texas. We do a Kill Tony, a few stand-up shows there, uh, uh, October 3rd through the 5th, October 16th through 17th, uh, Sacramento, the road to Kill Tony mania. And then October 18th and 19th, that's it. Kill Tony Mania, San Francisco, California, our biggest annual event. Four Kill Tonys in two nights, and uh, that's crazy stuff. And then the week after that, believe it or not, we're going to Australia for the first time ever. Yeah. Kill Tony in giant theaters. Uh, tickets go on sale in two weeks for Australia. So if you're listening and you live in Australia, it's two weeks from now. You can buy tickets. And then uh, November 7th, our first ever Kill Tony in Washington, D.C. And then some stand-up shows uh, November 8th and 9th. And I believe, I believe, this is not official yet, but I believe we might be adding a, uh, another Gramercy Theater date at the end of that in beautiful New York nice. City before we head home. So if you're listening from New York, congratulations. You're the first person to find out that uh, we're going back to the Gramercy Theater. But tonight, it's about Fort Wayne, Indiana. And as you guys know, you guys fans of this podcast? <laughs> Well, then, as you know, normally on these shows, we go guestless. We don't normally have a guest on the road shows. But today is a very special day. Uh, I get to cross off one of my all-time favorite comedians uh, off the bucket list of people that have never been on this show before. This is uh, incredible for me. This, ever since I was uh, a fucking kid, staying up past my bedtime watching Letterman, this guy has been one of my favorite comedians ever. It is an honor to have him on the show. I can't believe it's happening in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the great Todd Barry. Wow. 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 This is incredible. Hey! Todd Berry, everybody. This is awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Todd. Not only have I never done this show, I've never listened to the show. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, we're excited that's to a, have that's you. That's another bucket list of yours. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, welcome, welcome. You're in Fort Wayne today. I am because of uh, this. <laughs> Could we're, be. We're happy to have you. We're gonna. No, have I'm fun. happy to be here. This is gonna be fun. We're gonna watch some comedians do comedy. Maybe it's their first time. Maybe they've done it before. It's gonna be crazy. We're going to enjoy it. Maybe you could help them out. You're one of the... Oh, no, I'm going to shred them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, we're, we're excited. We have Todd Berry. And uh, as you guys know, you diehard Kill Tony fans, there is a band on this show. Um, yeah. And uh, while the entire band couldn't make it, uh, we were able to bring the leader of the band. Uh, every single episode, he commits to being a different character. Maybe it's the return of one of his famous characters. Maybe it's a brand new character we've never seen or heard of before. There's been a lot of those lately. Uh, so uh, let's all see what he is tonight, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the best damn band in the land. It's Jeremiah Watkins, the Kill Tony Band. From Reagan and Watkins fame. And Mr. Postman. Oh, look at this. Wow. Here he comes. Wow. This is a real postman, ladies and gentlemen. This is incredible. Wow. A real postman from the post office. This is incredible. He handed me a piece of mail. This is very exciting. Welcome to the show, Mr. Postman. Hello, how are you guys? Wow. I didn't realize you were Native American. I am 100% European. Uh, European? Oh, yeah. I've never seen a postman wear an oven mitt before. What's going on there? Did you leave something in the oven? Sometimes I get cold and hot at the same time. <laughs> how long have you, oh, how long have you uh, how long have you been a postman for? Uh, thirteen hundred years. Thirteen hundred years. Yeah. He's been working at the post office before mail. And uh, your I name. I was on the first Pony Express. Wow. Okay. And your name is uh, Walter Fig. It Walter. Says here. Yes. Okay. Wow. The energy is buzzing in this room. <laughs> Just how I like it, right before my nap. Thank you for being here. Well, Walter, uh, yeah, you really, uh, you really uh, brought the room to a uh, all the excitement that we could expect of a postman. I think people still use postmen around here too. They have a family video. You, you ever deliver mail to a family video before? I just restocked the red box on Third Street. <laughs> the third. <laughs> I don't think they have a third street here in uh, Fort Wayne. Are you single, or do you have, like, a postmate? Like, uh, do you have a, a, another, like, a My girl? My wife's been dead for 30 years. Oh, boy. Have a... you ever been attacked by a dog? Good question. Am I allowed to speak? Yes. <laughs> You're looking at me like you, I, I wasn't supposed to speak. You, uh, I'm sorry. You, is, are we doing crowd work right now? <laughs> Yes, you're allowed to speak, and yes, I've been attacked by many dogs. A Doberman pincher took my Achilles out one time. Took your whole Achilles? Yeah, it bit into my Achilles. The right Achilles on my foot is actually a replacement of a baby dog. Okie dokie, Walter. I think we're uh, <laughs> colliding some thoughts there. Jeremiah is uh, one half of the hit band Reagan and Watkins. He'll be selling... Uh, Vinyls and CDs available after the show. He'll sign them for you. Also available after the show is the brand spanking new Ryan J.E. Belt Design Rock and Pins Made Kill Tony pin. Glows in the dark, double reinforced steel. Very exciting. And there's also Tony Hinchcliffe pins. Uh, the rare elusive with my face on it. And uh, it's, it doesn't have the facial hair. But if you want, I'll, I'll take a black Sharpie and I'll make the mustache right on the spot. I'll even leave a little space in the middle to keep it authentic. Um, so uh, those are available after the show. But we have the Postman. We have Todd Berry. We have Red Band. We have everything we need, which brings me to this, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Fort Wayne Bucket of Destiny, where anything can happen. A bunch of people signed up before the show. 
You should know how it works. If I pull your name out of the bucket, you get 60 seconds on that microphone uninterrupted. You know your 60 seconds is up in here. The sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then, or else you're going to bring out the angry Babylon bear. That didn't get the pop I thought it was going to get. Let's try it one more time. Wrap it up then, or else you're going to bring out the angry West Central bear. Is that a gayer reference than Babylon? Yes, very gay neighborhood around here. I delivered some mail, and it was actually a man in a box. Oh. Uh, After that, uh, after your set, we interview you, we talk with you, try to find out more about you, maybe other stuff about your life that's interesting. And uh, that's it. You guys ready to start this show? We're live. This is so exciting. Oh, that's where you want them to enter? Yeah, just... Look, there's multiple entrances to this stage. The real trick is just taking your time getting on or off once you make it to the stage part. It's a little bit of a high-rise stage here. I don't think you're going to make it around all these to this one because there's all these thick Fort Wayne thighs everywhere. (laughs) Just everybody just eating fucking deep-fried potato balls every day of the week before swinging into family video to fucking eat more Twizzlers or something like that. Yeah, I said it. This is a Twizzler-eating city, if I've ever seen it before. (laughs) All right, I pulled a name out of the bucket. Here we go. 60 seconds, uninterrupted, going to your first comedian tonight. Put your hands together for Jay Kennedy. Here we go. Here he comes. Here comes Jay. Wow, that is music. One more time for Jay Kennedy, everybody. So, uh, so I was watching TV the other day. I uh, do that a lot. You know, I've got a lot going on in my life. Um, saw, saw a Samsung commercial. Uh, apparently the new Samsung phone and, uh, you know, their, their, their products have this, this technology that you can share. You know, you get, if you've got um, different, fuck, uh, different um, products, you can, you know, you, if someone's down on battery, you can, you can share your battery. Um, the commercial starts off, you know, two, two people in, in a coffee shop, uh, strangers. Um, you know, one guy's one guy's got no no battery. Um, girl looks over. Yeah, you can you can take my battery, whatever. That guy then goes, you know, somewhere else, shares it with somebody else. It kind of does this full circle to where you know, five minutes later, um, the guy's back in in the in the same coffee shop with a different girl, who then he hands his you know Samsung product, uh, says, Yeah, you can go ahead and take mine. Um, and I just really thought, yeah. <laughs> Wow. I mean, that was incredible, Jay. Descriptive. That was mind-boggling. Did you did, did you uh, did you rehearse that a little bit? Not at all. <laughs> wow. Because you can time you can use uh, you can time it and see. If, um. Yeah. Yeah, I thought of that one like yesterday when I was watching TV. So, um, hot off the presses. What, <laughs> <laughs> what were you watching? Some bad Samsung commercials while yeah, getting hit in the I head was, with an aluminum I, I baseball bat? I didn't really get to the punchline. It was just more so how Samsung thinks that that many people have Samsung products where you know you're going to be able to share it with a random person. Look yeah. at that. Is that a Samsung? <laughs> it is. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, you're you're not a sheep. You don't have an Apple product. Wait, Are you asking me questions? Huh? Jay, what's... Yeah, let's check in with Walter Fig, the local postman. During his shit, did anybody else smell burning toast? (laughs) No, that was just you, Walter. I think that's the sign of a stroke. So let's talk about it, Jay. Is this your uh, first time attempting stand-up comedy? Yes. Wow, congratulations. There you go. The go to the first time. You got to give him credit for that. I have no idea what the fuck you were talking about the entire time. Yeah, I didn't either. Yeah. What, what do you think happened up there? Did you blank out a little bit? Was your yeah. vision a little more clear before you got on stage? I mean, I had the idea of the punchline, just didn't really have any setup. What in was mind, the punchline? Yeah, what was it going to be? Just that no one has Samsung. I mean, I kind of explained to how no one uses Samsung products, and that Samsung really thinks that, you know, that many people... Will will use their products to you know where this technology. Okay, yeah, be it's still that's where, not a punchline. Where, where you're gonna Did run you? into a random stranger, kind of, and like, oh yeah, can I you know get some? Okay, charge? no, stop, yeah. just stop, stop. Did you stop. wonder? Did you wonder like if if there's a, if they're a company that can't no one uses, how did they afford those commercials? 
You're asking the tough questions. I know, yeah. <laughs> Just telling you that uh, this is the type of shit you have to think about. <laughs> I'm not really scolding him. I'm playing around. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't announce that. I'm fucking scolding you, man. <laughs> yeah. So, Jay, uh, let's talk about it. How old are you? 23. 23 years old. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, you're from here in Fort Wayne? Uh, from Elkhart, Indiana. Northern Indiana. Oh, what's up, yeah. in, what's up in that part of Indiana? Uh, RVs and meth. RVs and meth. No, R- RVs, like uh, recreational vehicles. Oh. Well, not Arby's. Well, I mean, uh, there's, there's a couple. It's of probably people. Arby's, too, let's know. be real. <laughs> that'd, be a good, uh, that'd be a good business, Arby's and Arby's. Yeah. Or Arby's and Arby's. Right. I think Arby's first and Arby's second. Um, all right. Is Do that you, the only joke you've ever written? Uh, I wouldn't really call it writing, but yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. I, I, was, I haven't written it. It was more just stuck in my head. Okay. You know, I should probably try that. It was stuck in your head. The like, thought of Samsung was stuck in your head, and you had yeah. the audacity to criticize their <laughs> commercials. You're like, I cannot stop thinking about Samsung. Fuck them. I'm going to show them. I'm going to roast their commercial. So I'm going to give it another commercial. As we learned today, some things should be kept as thoughts inside here. <laughs> I think the joke's on us. Samsung probably gave this guy money to just come up and say Samsung 48 times. Like, no way you could say it. And he's like, I'll fucking do it, dude. It's the number one live podcast in the world. I'm going to say Samsung 48 times. It was 30 cents per, per Samsung. Yeah. Oh, shit. 0 for 9. Um, <laughs> it's the numbers are not looking good. Yeah. Jay Kennedy is dying on stage like an actual Kennedy. Uh, what? <laughs> What's your job? Uh, I work in logistics. You work in logistics? Yeah, so oh. I... Uh, you could have mapped out that joke. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at Walter. Good. Walter's attempting to clap right now. He doesn't really, uh, doesn't really have it. So, so, Jay, you work in logistics. Uh, do you love your job? Eh. No, not really. I mean, yeah. it's, it's exciting, I guess. I've only been doing it for like three months. So. Yeah. What do you do for fun? What is a 23-year-old in uh, northern I, Indiana? Mm, work out. I mean, I've you know, been trying to teach myself like piano. Dude, uh, I don't know. Not a whole lot to do. Yeah. Why does it look like in high school he went all state in date rape? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He does look like that. For those of you that are just listening, he looks like an all-state uh, date rapist. <laughs> have you ever, uh, I got Jay, have you ever had uh, consent? You didn't deserve that, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I didn't a think bad so. joke doesn't deserve what he just did to you. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had consensual sex with a woman before? Yeah. Yeah? How recently? Um, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Now, who was this? Who was this girl? What, what do you like? What was her name? No. Kate. No, was it? No, Brian. <laughs> there was no reason for that. I don't, I don't that understand. is not very nice. You're saying he fucked a pig? My goodness. The Twizzler Town. Oh, yeah. come on, come on. Okay, so no, not her name. That wouldn't be the interesting thing. Like, the question is more like, or, you know, where'd you meet her? Uh, or have you done it before? Yeah, it, was, it was Tinder. Yeah, no, it was first time encounter. Wow, first time. Did she time know you were a comedian? <laughs> I can't she, answer that. She could be in this audience right now. She still wouldn't think you're a comedian. Uh, it's logistically impossible. <laughs> so you're on Tinder, you find the girl, and then what happens? You're like, hey, want to hang out? Want to come over and hang out in my uh, place? Pretty much, yeah. And you have your own apartment? Nope, live in my dad's basement. You live in your dad's basement. Wow. This what was actually, I mean, this was in Bloomington. I was moving out of my last apartment. I went to, I went to school at IU, so I was moving my stuff out. Um, just matched with her on Tinder that night. Uh, wow. Yeah, I had pretty much all my furniture moved out except for my mattress. Oh, so, shit, perfect. Yeah, look, yeah. My goodness yeah. gracious. Uh, <laughs> where'd you take her on the date? No, there wasn't a date. Oh, you just, just went right into it. Yeah. You're like, hey, want to come over to my dad's yeah. basement? No, it was in my. It was in the apartment in Bloomington. It wasn't, it oh. wasn't there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was as I was moving stuff. So out. she came over. Uh, did she look as good as she did on her uh, Tinder avatar? Yeah. 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 And then what happens? So you, you guys are sitting on the couch at first. There is no couch. Right. Yeah. It was, it was the floor. Yeah. There's there was no couch. There's you no. You should fr- marry there was just this one, woman, I think. In, in the, yeah. In the apartment. Yeah. Literally just a mattress. <laughs> yes. 
See, she came in. She sat down on the mattress. I mean, I gave her a warning. Yeah, I was like, "Hey, I'm moving out. It's, I'm moving my stuff out. Like, I look like I live in a crack den, but I promise I'm not." And she's like, like "That is the reddest red flag." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How was your hygiene? Was did she seem homeless at all or anything no, like that? Seemed clean. Seemed clean. Yeah, I didn't smell anything. Yeah. Wow. So, Mike, did you have sheets on the bed? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You Jeez, didn't smell anything. That's a little suspect. Did you use a condom? No. Wow. Seriously? Look at you, you dirty dog. <laughs> you dirty, dirty dog. Uh, my goodness. And uh, so how long did you last? I uh, didn't have my timer out. I don't know. Long enough, I we guess. We know he doesn't time things. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, a minute does last. It seemed a lot longer than you'd think, yeah. So. Wow. So my goodness. <laughs> that is very incredible. And you've been teaching yourself piano? I guess. I mean, you guess? I, bought, I bought a music theory for dummies book. So Music theory for dummies? That, yeah. Oh. You should get uh, STDs for dummies. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, man. That, that is some incredible stuff. That's risky business. You, you do Tinder a lot? I, I, I don't know what a lot is. Um, Sure. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. There's something really douchey about you. you know that? I get that a lot. Yeah. You have the most unbelievable confi- confidence out of anyone that I know lives in their father's basement. <laughs> it's mind-boggling to For me. For a guy who just bombed, that is some confidence you got right <laughs> yeah. Do you ever ask your dad for a spot when you're lifting weights in his basement? No, but it is funny because I do lift weights in his basement. But no, I don't. That's why I asked you if you ever asked yeah. him for a spot. <laughs> no. Hey, Dad, come down here. I'm maxing out right now. <laughs> I'm having trouble understanding why Walter Figg, uh, as you're a white guy from Europe, but you sound exactly like a Native American. I'm having a little trouble uh, understanding that. I am a 100% American white European male. But you seem like you're saying that so that people don't take your land or something like that. Like, it seems no, like... but Tinder in my age was smoke signals to other villages. <laughs> All right. And sometimes you would see a boob form in the, the smoke. Okay. Walter. All right. Well, Jay, uh, you, uh, you did stand up for the very first time here today. How do you feel? Shitty. Wow. All right. There you go. Go back to your dad's basement. Jay Kennedy, everybody. On to the next one. Doesn't get any better than that. It just doesn't get any better than that. How do you feel shitty? Wow. How about a hand for the band over here? Playing, uh, playing them off. Let's keep it moving along. Pulled it on the name out of the bucket. Your next comedian goes by the name of Rhett Schimberg. Rhett Schimberg, here he comes. Here comes Rhett. Here he is. Rhett Schimberg, everyone. Whew. Okay. So, uh, single for the uh, first time in a while, a few months ago. And I started getting on the dating app. So, Tinder, Bumble, all that stuff. But, uh, being a bigger guy with a dad bod, you know, it's, it's pretty tough. You know, it's a big pool of guys out there. Made me want to kind of just make like a catfish account. Not even just a hot girl. I feel like I could get more matches if I had an actual catfish. <laughs> Thank you. Say something like, uh, I like long swims in the river. I'll nibble on your arm if you stick it in my hole. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Once I get to know a girl, though, uh, usually goes a little better. Like, I have a gay cousin. He was a big influence on my life, so it makes me, like, just gay enough to get along with girls. Like, I don't, I don't like to suck dick, but, like, I know all the words to mean girls. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Here he is. Don't be worried about being nervous, by the way. What was that? Don't worry about being nervous. You're new at this, and you're sitting, you're standing three inches from, like, the best comedian in the world. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was proud of myself for having a joke. Well, there a you joke? go. Yeah, yeah. Which one was it? <laughs> yeah. 
I'm going to go with the second one. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> no, that's good. You're adorable. You're a giggly little guy, aren't you? I like to think so. Heck yeah. Is that your first time on stage? Yes, sir. Wow. First time ever. We're popping cherries here tonight. My goodness. This is exciting. How old are you, Rhett? 23. 23 year old beautiful lesbian uh, <laughs> it's always fun to have diversity on this show uh, we had a st- straight white male that raw dogs hookers uh, lives in his dad's basement the epitome of white privilege and here we are with a beautiful beautiful what's beautiful your name again Rhett what's your job uh, I'm an industrial engineer Okay. Oh, wow. Look you at just you. moved to town on Thursday. Could have I, built a better structure for that <laughs> joke. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, <laughs> Todd Berg. <laughs> so funny. Did uh, you say your name is Rhett? Yes. Like, without the B? <laughs> exactly. Okay. That's a cool name, R-H- R-H-E-T-T. Yes, sir. Is that your real name? Yep. All right. My goodness. It's a terrible question I just asked. (laughs) (laughs) So you're from here in Fort Wayne? No, I'm not. I just moved here on Thursday. Why? For work. (laughs) For work. I'm I'm originally from uh, Tampa, Florida. Ooh. Lived in Wichita, Kansas for about six months before this. Nice airport in Wichita. It actually, it's not too bad. It is nice. Pretty all small, right. but pretty I, nice. I didn't need to bring that up, I guess. <laughs> for all, it's not an airport. For all crowd. you Wichita airport fans out there uh, <laughs> listening. Uh, that's Some entertaining podcasting here. Hell yeah. I love that you uh, put the mic to your side like Anthony Jeselnik after every answer uh, to every question. Thank you. All right. Um, so, uh, so, Rhett, you're 23 years old. You just moved here. Are you excited about your move to Fort Wayne? Have you gone to the family video yet? I haven't. But in Wichita, Kansas, I saw probably three or four family videos. Wow. Then this is an upgrade for you. Yeah. Have you been to one down. of the $50 stores they have here? Nope, not yet. <laughs> okay. Thought wow. that would get a bigger laugh. So tell us about you, Rhett. What, do you, uh, what makes you you? Any fun facts about Rhett that we should know about? You have a hmm. weird family, or you do anything fun, hobbies? Um, I mean, I got a, a pretty big family. Everybody lives back in Tampa. I could uh, tell. It's genetic. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody's as big as me, surprisingly. Right. Everyone's back in Tampa. What else? Um, let's see. I, uh, last two years in high school, I was on the bowling team. Oh, the bowling team. Were you the ball? <laughs> what's, your, what's your high game? My high game, I think it was like a 237, maybe. But enough about your weight. <laughs> I like your mockish. Pretty, pretty accurate. <laughs> Heck yeah. Well, now that you're in Fort Wayne, your life is in the gutter. So the bowling experience should uh, come back to... Uh, yeah, that, was a, that joke was a 7-10 split. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. Can we have turkey for lunch? Do you have any, uh, living in Florida, do you have any Florida stories that, you, that you're ashamed of that you've done or your family? Yeah. Mm. yeah. You ever walk in on your father having sex with an alligator or something like that? No. Honestly, nothing that crazy. I mean, l- growing up in Florida, I don't understand all the Florida man stuff because everything just seems normal to me. Right. Coming out to the Midwest, I mean, it's definitely a lot more tame. Do you know I graduated from UF? You did? I just graduated from UF. Did you really? Yes, Which sir. Which dorm did you live in? Uh, Beatty. That's where I lived. Hey. West. Wow. Beatty West. Yeah, that would me too. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> That's a little weird that we both lived in the same yeah. dorm. Same wait, wait, what, what floor were you on in the dorm? Fifth floor? Uh, it's on third. Uh, uh, I thought he was going to be on the sixth floor and he was going to be on the ninth floor. <laughs> <laughs> You what? mean like a 69 joke? Is that what <laughs> yeah. that was. I can get you fired from the post office for that. <laughs> it's making me uncomfortable. My goodness. So, Rhett, this is true. You're single and... Uh, Not single anymore. Whoa. Oh, you shit. found someone here in Fort Wayne since Not you got here Wayne. on Thursday? It was, it's back in Wichita. Oh. Ooh, L- long distance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Red band. Oh. On fire. How, how far yeah. is Wichita from here? Too far. It was like, like a 12-hour drive, I think. Oh. So what's your plan on seeing this girl again? Uh, we have some plans to go to some football games together, do some... Yeah. What? what, what? Uh, hold on. 
What, what football? We're, we're, we're both big college football fans. So she went to Kansas State. I'm going to go to one of those games. She's going to come back to Florida, visit each other every once in a while, see how it works out. Oh, you guys have weeks left in this relationship. <laughs> this is incredible. You're just waiting around for the college football season to start. Yeah, nothing, nothing gets a woman riled up like an NCAA game. Yeah. Uh, I actually broke up with my ex-girlfriend of six years on Valentine's Day. Wow. Holy shit. Oh, my goodness. Class act. Why, why did you pick Valentine's yeah. Day? I mean, things were falling apart for a while, and uh, I didn't want to have a really nice Valentine's Day just to lead her on. <laughs> So I figured what, so what better time than now. So you're spinning this as a nice thing that you did. Exactly. <laughs> Why wouldn't you do it like the week before, though? That seems yeah. so cruel. There, there, was, there was a big fight like the weekend right before What was Valentine's the fight about? Day. Tell yeah, us the truth. I love hearing about that. Give us the juicy details. <laughs> uh, it had to do with like, I mean, I would been in Wichita for a month. Uh-huh. She didn't like me hanging out with other people all the time. A little controlling. Yeah. How did um, she know you were hanging out with other people? You told her or she was... Yeah, I would You mean tell other her. women or just hanging out with friends? I mean, like, other women and friends. Oh, you were cheating on her. <laughs> was yeah. not cheating. I promise that. No, okay. you weren't cheating on her, but you immediately found a girl in Wichita that you're willing to live 12 hours away from <laughs> and just meet up with and go to college football games and masturbate most days of the year. Spot on. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. So on Valentine's Day, was this over the phone? Yeah, over FaceTime. I actually, I started to do it, you know, the day before Valentine's Day. Yes. You were uh, like, hey, there's something I have to tell you. I want to break up. (laughs) Did you already buy chocolate and stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had chocolate? uh, It was a, like, uh, edible arrangement. uh, Chocolate-covered strawberries sent to her that I couldn't cancel. She they should break up. up with you for getting her an edible arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was just the chocolate-covered strawberries. Yeah, I heard you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Wow. Yeah, they, they showed up, uh, I think, the day after Valentine's Day, after oh the breakup God. was official. Oh, hell yeah. Nothing better than melted chocolate on soggy strawberries to, uh, to really end a relationship. Also interesting, they couldn't nail a February 14th delivery date. It is a little strange. <laughs> you think that's what they would do best? <laughs> And that was, and she's in Florida, right? Yeah, she is. Was she upset when you broke up with her? Oh yeah, it was a uh, it was a rocky relationship, but rocky she, road. <laughs> she lives in Florida. She uh, she just moved to Georgia. Okay, a Close. little closer to. Still all the way across the country. Is yeah. she dating? I mean, is she dating anyone new in uh, Georgia? Not that I know of. She just moved there. Um, <laughs> oh, I thought I thought you were trying to shoehorn something in there. There are black men in Georgia. That is the sound effect of the Apollo 13. Um, Rhett Schimberg, congratulations, dude. Your first time ever on stage. Thank you very much. There he is. There he goes. Just counting down the days for the big Kansas State Wildcat football game so that he can uh, get a hand job in a parking lot at a football stadium. <laughs> See, that's like a Native American song you just played. Uh, that is a European tribal song. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. That is an Indian, a Native American song. I know it for a fact. And I'm telling you. <laughs> European. Okay. Uh, got another name out of the bucket. Let's see what happens here. Make some noise for Jacob eBay. Jacob eBay. <laughs> Here he comes. Here comes Jacob, ladies and gentlemen. He's walking to the stage. Here he is. One more time for Jacob, everyone. Hello. <clears throat> so I've always considered myself as a straight guy until the other day I was having sex and I realized that I had a uh, big pink dildo on my butt. Um, <laughs> it all started with a slip of a finger. Speaking of being gay, uh, I think pro wrestling kind of gets a bad rep. So it's all, at least they're upfront about everything being staged. But I think other sports are staged as well. Like NASCAR, for instance. They have uh, heroes and villains, and I'm pretty sure it's all intentional. You have Dale Earnhardt, who was a great hero, tragically died in a fire. Then you have uh, Tony Stewart, ran a guy over. 
kind of took the whole villain thing over the top. Then, um, <laughs> okay, so I also want to apologize to the person I was sitting next to. I'm wearing uh, women's deodorant, and just like everything else that's female, it is just there for looks and doesn't really work. Just there for looks, doesn't work. What was, it? what was that last punchline? I it, said, it I, doesn't uh, what? It's just there for looks and it doesn't really work. Oh, okay. You're saying that Ooh. women <laughs> don't work? Like, they, that's, that's such a weird thing to say. <laughs> uh, is it weird? You know that thing that where women don't work? And no, I've never heard that before. Huh, that's weird. That's okay. interesting. But Let's always end with a sexist thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That was kind of a. Uh, I rehearsed it last night and I thought after the NASCAR thing it would be 60 seconds, but I guess I spoke too quick. No, I mean, it, it was all bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about it. So, uh, Walter? Yeah, after hearing your first joke about the dildo in your butt, I would like to rename you a European name. Wrestles with sexuality. <laughs> Wait, that would be... That's clearly a Native American type of name. Very clearly. clearly. Like Dances with Wolves. Yeah. Eat, eat it, eating with, with, with Funyuns. Okay. Um, so you thought you were straight, then you realized you had a, a pink dildo in your butt. Now, you were talking about a finger? Uh, no, I had got pegged. You had gotten pegged. Mm -hmm. So that means that a woman put on a strap-on and had sex with you in your butthole. Absolutely. So how did you... You didn't... Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so you realize this as it was happening? Well, it all started off with just like a finger, which I was like, oh, you know, that's not gay. You know, you when you say it started off with a finger, like, are you guys standing in the kitchen? And like, I mean, you just it, say that out of nowhere. We're at the dollar store online. <laughs> <laughs> it, it happened over a period of like a, uh, a month or so. It just started with the finger and so then we slowly progressed. Slowly started an entire month. month. She kind of ramped up to the finger for a full month. She's like, These were uh, different experiences. <laughs> it, could, it could be gay to have a finger in your ass, too. Like, if it's Jeff's finger, it's probably a gay, you know? Yeah, if it's Jeff, it'd be gay. Mm -hmm. So she put the finger in there, and she's like, if you think that's uncomfortable, hang out for a second. I got to go to the closet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I liked, um, I liked the finger to start off with, and then we uh, kind of started exploring more and more. Actually, it was a toad when to you start say off exploring. with. A toad? A, a toe. toe, okay. Yeah. Wait, toad would have been a better story. But. <laughs> <laughs> she put a toe in your butt? Yeah, we were... Whose we were, toe? Huh? Whose toe was it? Her own toe. Was it the big toe? It was. Wow. Yeah. Let's check in with, uh, let's check in with Walter. Yeah, uh, I have learned from uh, my forefathers before me how to read minds, and I'm reading the mind of this audience right now, and they're saying, you're disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Old, uh, so, a like, how, did, how, how do you end up with the toe in your butt? Like, give us the lay of the land there. Like, are, again, oh, you're laying in bed, you're both naked. Yeah, okay, so we were at a hotel, and we were both naked. We, were just, we weren't, like, in the middle of having sex. Um, no, you were doing foreplay. Yeah, kind of, yeah. and we were facing you each other. You were at other. a hotel? This sounds like the weirdest Holiday Inn Express commercial ever. Uh, <laughs> I had uh, a toe up my ass. But, yeah, we were facing each other, <laughs> and... A toe -toe. Her, facing each other? Yeah, because we were just, like, sitting there. <laughs> this naked. story is unbelievable. You mean to tell me she put her foot between your legs and was then... Was she trying to kick you in the balls? And the um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Wasn't well, trying to. Ray, so, okay, could we show the audience, like, like, how did this happen? So, like, you guys okay, are so sort of... We were sitting like this. Oh, wow. Dude, Imagine you just love there. having stuff in your yeah. ass. I can and tell by the way you're squatting. And this then is I incredible. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're gay, dude. Like yeah. Ew. Oh, yeah, you're gay. You don't have to ever wonder again. You're gay. <laughs> so uh, you rode her toe? Um, kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. He, he rode like her toe reverse cowgirl, <laughs> and, that's, and that's how he knew he was gay. Actually, regular cowgirl. My goodness. Wow. So, so then the next time it was like... It was next time I think it was a finger, 
And then we... Oh, uh, she went back to the finger. Oh, she started with... She the started with the toe. Okay. But she started with the toe. Now, that's interesting because I do believe that a big toe is thicker than any one finger. Yeah. So are we talking about one finger or maybe so she, two fingers? Well, a toe is only she about She downgraded this. you. It's weird. Yeah. Well, a toe... Her toe is probably about that long. Her finger... Oh, further. But up. a little bit girthier. Have you had stuff in your butt before she started putting stuff up there? No. No. So she broke the old, uh, she popped the old. Uh, she popped my anal cherry. Wow. It's no. called a walnut. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that, Walter? How do you know this type of sexual stuff? I've been here since the beginning of time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so you went from a toe to a finger, and she went all the way in with that. Was the length, Was because uh, I, I don't know what it's like. I, 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 I know a lot of people would love for me to admit that uh, I know about butt stuff, but it's all very scary to me. It's all very frightening. And uh, so is it, is it harder having something girthy, or is it harder having something longer? Like, what, what's the more painful so, um, <laughs> are you getting like shy? you get to a certain spot? <laughs> Wait, I, Todd asked him if he's getting shy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just trying to make sure I get it right. Um, there's a certain length that it goes up to where it's fine, but then you come to this wall. Yeah, and after that, the length really hurts. But initially, like in the first couple inches, girth is the worst part. First couple inches. Little known fact, Pink Floyd's The Wall is actually about an <laughs> anal cavity. Hey, wow. That's incredible. How'd you have that there? That was very fast. Very, very fast. Very. very. Okay. So, so, so then you went beyond the toe. Yeah, yeah. we went, well, we went toe, Elbow. finger, sex store, strap on. You're not sex gonna, store, strap on. Yeah. Sounds I'm worried like that you're going to steal Good old that fashioned microphone. girl. Steal it? Oh, I just, had, yeah. I just had a great joke that you guys missed. Yeah, so I'm gonna, no. I worried that you guys, that he's going to steal the microphone. Yeah, <laughs> Walter, Walter, Walter has no chill. Get it to shove up his ass. <laughs> uh, wow, your bedroom must smell like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, okay. After the strap on, I was done because I was. That was horrible. <laughs> what? What happened? <laughs> Tell us about it. How okay, hold on. So, um, what do you mean you were done? I, you I retired. His, he had a jersey rose you up with uh, just an asshole and a toe on it. I think he just said like a gay guy, I am done. I am yeah. done. No, I uh, quit Jeez. doing ass play after that. Yeah, you, you threw in the brown towel? What? The, the br- <laughs> brown and red, yeah. My go- oh, oh, Jesus man. Christ. Oh, my God. So, yeah, I was... Uh, it's the Indiana state flag. <laughs> 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 Walter. Uh, okay, so what happened during the pegging that made you uh, retire? Oh, it hurt so bad. And then um, I had been with the girl for a while. I mean, it's kind of emasculating a little bit, but I also I came during it, so that was even worse. So you came out of your wiener while having stuff in your butt. Yeah, I oh, was doing yeah. one of these things. Oh, one yeah. of these things? Jerking off? Oh, jerking yeah. Jerking off while the... Is that what you meant by one of these things? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of these while things, While you yeah. were doing the jerk-offs? Have you yeah. thought about... Uh, Mansplaining at its finest. <laughs> 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 have you thought about uh, being with a man? No, not really. Yeah, you have. Uh, that pause was priceless right there. Um, no... I C- haven't. Can I ask what the protocol is for cleaning off a dirty toe like that? You say cleaning it? <laughs> um, I think then it was hotel sheets. Oh, oh wow. Oh, my God. I'm so glad I asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez Louise. All right, Jacob. Uh, what do you do for a living? Server. You're what? A, s- a server. Oh, a great. Server? Good to know. That's, these are the people handling our food. <laughs> I thought uh, something funky was with the Hawaiian burger here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah did it taste a little bit like a, like a shitty toe to you? <laughs> All right, Jacob. Well, this was your first time doing yes. stand-up? Well, there we go. Three first-timers so far tonight. He got pegged up here. Jacob eBay. Let's keep it moving along. This was... That was one of the most educational portions of Kill Tony I think we've ever had. Toe in the butt, finger in the butt, and then moved all the way up 
just getting fucked by some chick that does not respect him at all. You know what I'd really like is I'd like to fuck you in the ass with a bunch of stuff. All right. Pulled another name out. Let's see what this guy's had up his ass. Make some noise for Joey Squid, everybody. Here we go. Here he comes. Here's Joey, everyone. Fort Wayne. You ever gotten bad advice, only later on to find out it was pretty good advice? My whole life, my dad gave me, it was more of a catchphrase for anything sexual related. I never really got the sex talk from my dad. So every time I was like, hey, dad, what's masturbation? And he would just say, when the little head's red, the big head is dead. I never really knew what that meant. I always thought it was terrible advice. And then my girlfriend, when I was 19, told me she was pregnant. And I said, when the little head's red, the big head's dead. So now that I'm a dad, I think I'm going to pull that mantra to my kids. I'm going to say, son, when you want to go downstairs, put the snake on a rope and tie it to a chair. There you go. Joey Squid, welcome to the show. How's it going, Joey? Hey, Tony. How are you? I'm good. You are a beautiful woman with a beard. Um, Let's first acknowledge that. You have hot chick hair. (laughs) One of the old Hanson boys. So uh, welcome, Joey. First time doing stand-up? Third time. Third time ever. How did the other two go? First time was actually on this show. On it this was show? here in Fort Wayne last year? <laughs> no, it was in Columbus. Hey, no repeats, man. Oh, Columbus, Columbus. Ohio. That's been a while. Yeah, that's like been a long time. Three or four years ago, yep. And then what'd you do in between then and now? There was uh, another time? I went up to an open mic spot and tried it out again. Awesome. Where do you live? Uh, a little town called Kokomo. Kokomo. All right. Where's Good. that at? Just north of Indianapolis. Wow. Is that what the Beach Boys sang about in the song? That's exactly what they were not singing about. All right, Joey. You have all the personality of the (laughs) top half of a centaur. (laughs) It's exciting. Three times in four years, can I just say that your story is inspiring? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So... So, Joey, uh, welcome, welcome. You have a lot of hair. It is incredible. You take good care of that. I do. You have, a, like, a leave-in conditioner or something like that? Uh, nope. No. Nope. Okay, Joey. <laughs> uh, what do you do for work? Uh, I work in logistics. R- come on. With the other guy. Really? Are you lying? I'm a, I'm a truck driver. You're, You're a truck, truck driver? driver? Yes. Huh. Look at that. I would have said um, hipster barbershop owner or something. <laughs> truck driver? You don't look like a truck driver. Yeah. Like semis? Like, like on. I hide it well. Uh, no, UPS. Uh. UPS? Wow. Look at this. You have some competition, Walter. The, wow, the, that's, it, a, that's really... It was watches. the last comedian that taught us what Brown can do for us, though. <laughs> it's a butthole joke again. We all got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, can jo- I? Can we get the energy lower in this room, please? Yeah. <laughs> can we get lower energy in the monitors, please? Thank you. I always love it when the band acknowledges the energy in the room. Very good. It always, it always helps. Never hurts. Doesn't dampen the episode at all. Very good. I mean, well, we got Joey magi- we, impro- improvisational magical. We got well, we got Joey Squid being more interesting than a Manila envelope up here. There you go. Trying to inject something in the room. You're a listener of the show. Obviously, you have a, a bison shirt, and you mentioned rope on a snake in your set. Uh, but we didn't hear any jokes. Is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> yes, that is correct. We are uh, all in the same room right now. Um, so, Joey, tell us something about you that we'd be surprised to know. You're a dad. How old's your kid? I got three of them. Three of them? How old are they? 13, 9, and 8. 13, 9, and 8. And you, they all live in Kokomo, and you work for UPS. And how about the uh, baby mama? What's she up to? 
She's out here tonight. Wow. There she is somewhere. Uh, where You have a babysitter at home? Or this is a 13-year-old in charge right now? I hope you didn't get a babysitter just to do this. <laughs> we did get a babysitter. Yes. You did? Her mother is watching him. Oh, her mom's watching. <laughs> Heck yeah. Do you ever hold it over your wife that it took her nine months to deliver and you can deliver within a couple of days? <laughs> it's true. Have you ever delivered a package to John Mellencamp? No. That's all I know about Indiana. <laughs> ooh, sore subject. Have you delivered anywhere cool before where you're like, ooh, this is exciting. It's the Nestle factory or, uh, or um, the uh, racetrack the Indiana, or the family video. New deliveries. No. Nope. Never no. delivered anywhere fun. How about hobbies? Anything interesting that, uh, that you're uh, into? Anything fun about you at all? I got a pretty good high kick. Really? You have a good high kick? Well, I mean, you know, when in Rome, uh, well, this is it. You know, th- you know that music. Let's see that high kick. Don't kick your shoe off. Is your shoe on tight? There you go. Here he goes. It's to the sweet sounds of the Kokomo. Whoa! That's a, that is a good high kick. Walter, what do you think? Can you compete with that? I mean, my back has been thrown out for 10 years. Oh. But I could maybe oblige. Oh, wow. There you go. (laughs) There he goes. The high kick is a a running uh, thing on this show. Uh, I won't be doing this, by the way. No, you don't have to do it, Todd. It's only uh, only Jeremiah does it. But this character seems a little bit tight. He's uh, some clearly some age, some back problems. He has been around since the beginning of time. Yeah, I think he's stretching out. Either that or that's those are his kicks. This is going to be real interesting here. Here he goes. Whoa! <laughs> wow, Walter Fig. Oh, my goodness That gracious. might be real, Tony. Uh. Oh, wow. That is so exciting. What a great high kick. Incredible, Walter. I need medical assistance. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness gracious. Well, Joey, uh, you uh, have a good look for comedy. You have a, uh, an, a, uh, a very, uh, you know, like you, you very much... Your personality reminds me of this bottle of water. You don't, um, I'd say he doesn't have the comedy for comedy, though. <laughs> <laughs> you have the look, but you don't have the comedy for comedy. I love that line. Oh, uh, man. That's incredible. I'm batting like a thousand up here. Yeah, no, you're killing it. Um, Joey, I will give you this compliment. You have one of the best camel toes in all of comedy. You have a male, oh, he has a male camel toe. He, he's rocking his bathing suit here today. Not many people wear their bathing suit on stage, but uh, you know what? You, you went <laughs> off the deep end today. Some weird swimming pool reference. Insert your own if you're a real fan of the show there. Uh, I could say that he drowned on stage or that uh, I... That, uh, all right. Um, well, Joey, uh, there you go. The hair, what are we thinking? You going to keep it like that forever? You one of those? Uh, I'm gonna donate it. You're gonna donate it? Heck yeah! Wow, look, that got an applause. Everybody it's here, the, uh, you know, here in Fort Wayne, cancer uh, is a big <laughs> deal. Everybody has it. It's just McDonald's and fucking direct sunlight it's out the, here. Uh, so, is the donation center open today? Hint, hint. <laughs> we see Todd walking out with a full head of hair. All right, one more time for Joey Squid, everybody. There he goes. We're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep flying through it here. I wish you would step back from that ledge, my friend. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Jimmy Market. Jimmy Market. Here he comes. Wow. Here he is, Jimmy Market, everyone. Fort Wayne, make some noise. How are you guys doing tonight? Yeah. You guys, I've been doing some soul searching. Uh, 
More importantly, if I was a dog, uh, what kind of breed I'd be? And uh, I think I finally settled it on Golden Retriever, you guys. Because I'm cute, I'm friendly, and I look like I belong to a white family. All right. You guys, a little bit more about myself. Um, I just found out that my blood type is O negative, which means I could give my blood to almost anyone in the world. But I've come to find out that uh, not a lot of people appreciate that as a Christmas present. And look, guys, let's get this out of the way. Yes, I know I look like Papa Roach's number one fan. I get it, I know. But the truth is, I don't like Papa Roach. In my opinion, Papa Roach is the kind of music you listen to when you finally work up the courage to fight your stepdad. You know what I'm saying? You know, like you'll be in the, in the back listening to Last Resort, and you're like, you're going to fucking get these hands, Terry. All right, thank you. <laughs> Heck yeah. All right. Jimmy Market. Jimmy. Coming in with jokes, firing them off. Yeah. I'd say, uh... oh, I'm there sorry. There you go, Walter. <laughs> Walter. Jimmy was the... Best comic on the show so far. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. But, Thank you. But Appreciate also, it. also not good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Todd. Sure, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> it is true. Uh, is it your first time doing stand up? Uh, no, I've actually been doing stand up for almost three years now. Three years? Heck yeah. yeah. Where at? Um, Whose dad's basement have you been performing <laughs> in? Actually, I have had comedy shows in my dad's house, so close. Is that but, true? Yes, it is. You yeah. live with your dad? Uh, no, I actually live with my mom, but uh, right. like I have comedy. <laughs> Curveball. <laughs> <laughs> like I have um, comedy shows at my uh, dad's house every now and then, and my friend's house. You know, I run a uh, monthly uh, house comedy show. So you're like, I want to live with you, mom, but dad, I'm going to use your house as a venue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yes. Okay. My goodness. I You've been doing it for laugh. three years. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, where, where do you live? I live in a small town called uh, Sydney, Ohio. Sydney, Ohio. Yes. Um, it's about uh, <laughs> 40 it's minutes north of the Zayton area, Dayton, Ohio. Jeez, okay. man. Wow. What do, you, what do you do for a living? Um, I deliver pizzas. Seriously? Um, yeah, seriously. Wow. Yeah. How? For a major chain? Uh, yeah, for the most part. Uh, for the oh, mo- you, oh, you dab? Yeah. <laughs> you moonlight? You cheat on this? You cheat on dominoes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that, yeah. Donato. Wow. Like this cagey Donato. answer. <laughs> Uh, it's Mar- <laughs> this guy like, works for the CIA, but he's a pizza delivery guy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So uh, how long have you been delivering pizzas for? Uh, roughly about a year, but, you know, I'm trying to find something, you know, a little bit more uh, steady. Like you know? what? What are, you, what are you looking for? Um, I hope comedy's not on that list. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it is, Todd. That means a lot coming from you. <laughs> um, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, something where I can... Uh, you know, work uh, during the day and then hit open mics at night. Like, what's something that you're thinking about? Like, what's a ballpark of something? Did you go to college? Uh, for a semester, then I just realized, you know, it just wasn't f- for me, you know? So. Right. Yeah, pizza delivery was for you. <laughs> so, uh, what are you thinking you might do as a day job? What's something that you're qualified for that you know something about? Um, I mean, I've worked... Pretty much in almost anything. I mean, I've answered phones for a while. I've worked in factories, food service, uh, communication. You know, I mean, I've done a lot of everything. How old are you? Uh, 23. Everybody's Everyone's been 23, 23 so far. <laughs> it's incredible. Even the guy with a 13-year-old was 23 years old. It's incredible. Um, wow. So you're 23. You live in Sydney, Ohio. What are we yes. talking about for fun? What's a hobby of yours? You seem like you shoot a bow and arrow at empty <laughs> pizza boxes or something like that. Uh, no, I uh, watch a lot of wrestling. I play video games. Uh, I can't yeah. believe any of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look like you watch wrestling while playing video games. How do you afford the tattoos on the pizza delivery guy's salary? Oh, because I used to work at factories before I delivered pizza. Yep. So I had factory money, you know, to pay for the wow. tattoos. I got an idea money. for you. For the day job, sure. go to a factory. <laughs> what factory Whoa. did you work at before? Um, so my father, uh, he worked at this factory in my hometown for 38 years. Uh, was it a chocolate factory? No. <laughs> no, uh, he made um, miniature like, refrigerators for like RVs. And I worked there for... For RVs? 
Yeah, for recreational vehicles, not Arby's. actual RVs. What is the deal with <laughs> RVs going on around here in Indiana? So he made refrigerators for RVs. That's, yes. There's yeah. a special refrigerator for an RV. Yeah, it's like a miniature like refrigerator. I like a dorm refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Walter? Oh, huh, well, I didn't know that was a separate... That's a weird company. Yeah, I'm going to pitch an idea right now. Uh, I found that uh, you don't look like a Papa Roach fan at all. So I think that maybe each of us should tell him what he looks like, and then maybe he can use that instead of the Papa Roach thing. Um, okay, yeah. Let's, yeah, why uh, not? Let's do it. I like that idea. Okay, let's talk about it. Um, I think he looks like uh, if uh, Ed Hardy locked himself into a Krispy Kreme for the rest of his <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. That's a good one. I, uh, I've also been told once I look like um, Clark Kent if he never discovered he was Superman and got really fat. Yeah, you're like Clark Kent if he, if he couldn't fit in the phone booth to turn into Superman. <laughs> How about that? Or you're like Clark Kent if he only shot red stuff out of his eyes when he sees a Dairy Queen. <laughs> hey, yeah. look. Hey, hey, it's a pig. It's a truck. No, it's Jimmy Market. <laughs> How about that? As far as, far as Superman things. Why the, de- why the deer tattoo? Are you a hunter? Or are you just like Rudolph? What is that? Um, actually, um, it's an original uh, design from uh, Sailor uh, Jerry, the uh, tattoo artist from 1950s. I just really like his uh, artwork. So it's an original art thing from the 50s yeah. that you stole. Yeah. And are still <laughs> calling it original. <laughs> I love that. I got this done in the 50s. Walter, did you have anything that you felt like Jimmy Market looked like before Red Band forgot what we were doing? <laughs> I, I, I pitched a segment and then it went to shit real quick. <laughs> hey, uh, let me just cut it up. What about that uh, upside down deer tattoo that uh, no one can see except for me and you? Um, that is an ugly tattoo. And then you basically went and got a bunch of... And you have it on both sides? Uh, no, actually, this one's a mermaid. Actually. Oh, Sweet. wow. Yeah. Look at that. Heck Interesting yeah. mermaid placement. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. I like the fake laugh also. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. Walter. I mean, you're not Walter. You're Jimmy, right? Yeah. Jimmy. Wow. So, uh, so anything else that we should know about you, Jimmy, before we keep flying through it? Uh, yeah, why not? I actually... <laughs> oh, this guy's making the most of his moment. <laughs> I, um, so I've actually had a stutter pretty much all of my life. And then uh, I don't have it as much, but when I first started doing stand-up comedy, it was really bad. Yeah. yeah. How'd you get rid of it? I really do not know. Um, maybe it's just because I kept going on stage and I felt more uncomfortable on stage. It just went away. Um, sometimes I'll stutter when I get like nervous, but uh, hasn't really been happening as much. So I think things have been going pretty good so far. All right, yeah. that's good. I wow. like that. Yeah. Look so. at that. There you we'll go. Give you that one. Yeah. From the stutter to the butter. <laughs> How about one more time? I just feel bad that I'm not famous enough to trigger that stutter. Honestly, I. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard of me. Okay, I got you. No, 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 uh, no I have actually. <laughs> no. Does it ever come back? Yeah, like, like I mean, if you see a g- 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 ghost or something like that. <laughs> you're, you're I mean, that's kind of hacky, but yeah. I mean, yeah, it comes. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, Jimmy. Well, Thank you, you. You, had, you had a good, you had, for what it what it's been so far tonight. You've had the set of the night so far. Three years Thank of experience, you very much. Jimmy it's very Market. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you. Heck yeah. Okay, your next comedian goes by the name of Zach Garner, everybody. Zach Garner. Hey, Zach. Here he comes. He's walking to the stage. Zach Garner. What's up, Tiger Room? I'm, uh, I'm 31. I'm single. I'm at the point in my life where uh, I'm not going through the natural progression, but I'm watching other people my age do it. Uh, you know, you graduate high school, graduate college, you meet a girl or a guy, you get married, you have one and a half kids or whatever the national average is, and uh, then you buy a $60,000 truck, at least where I'm from, small town Indiana, and uh, you back it into every parking spot you can find. You say things like, hey, you see them tires? Those are stock. 
And uh, yeah, I really love the new front end on this model. And uh, my new favorite, the tailgate folds down into stairs. Why the fuck do you need stairs on your tailgate, right? I, uh, like I said, though, I'm not a natural progression guy. Obviously, I'm here at 2.30 on a Saturday telling jokes on Kill Tony. So not a natural progression guy. I'm at uh, the point where I drink gravy out of the corner of my meals at the end of them. I fold the cardboard and just tip it back. I'm not at rock bottom yet, but I'm close. Uh, I'll give you an example. If I was a girl, I'd be at the bar on the weekends trying to get pregnant. Because uh, nothing says uh, rock bottom like a bar baby. Am I right? Thank you. That's my time. Wow, there you go. Zach Garner. go welcome uh welcome to the show zach this is your first time on no i've been doing it for about four years oh four years huh? oh huh. uh I, but your first time here oh on? yeah first time here sorry yeah. very cool how four. often do you do it uh i try to do it at least a few times a month um but i work a lot so i, I live what do you do in the city i build furniture and art for a living wood woodworking you, you build art yeah art and furniture tables and wall hangings and things like that okay wow i've never heard the term build art before I make art, I guess build it's furniture. That's what I do. <laughs> My goodness, hell That's yeah! Great, what I just said. <laughs> uh, you build like uh, furniture. So, like, what, what, it, what can you make? Uh, pretty much anything, man. Uh, I've done everything from cabinets to tables to uh, at Temple University. I've got stuff hanging on the wall in the football building that's man. metal stuff. So you yeah. could build kitchen cabinets, and clearly, you can also destroy kitchen <laughs> cabinets. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. The, the things thing. inside them and the actual cabinets themselves. Can you uh, put up shelves? I can put up shelves, yeah. Here's what's going to happen. I, <laughs> in exchange for one comedy lesson. <laughs> from you? Pl- yes, from me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, he's going to give you a different comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I get there and I'm like, wait a second, where's Todd? No, it's me. Uh, y- you have to fly to New York at your own expense. <laughs> okay. And put some shelves in my apartment. All right, great. Sounds, sounds good. And you have good. to pay for the materials. All right, good. <laughs> like you get one 20 minute. <laughs> that's just, that's it. Right. And it's if not, I have any like water lying around, I'll give you a glass of that. All right, perfect. It sounds like get a my good info deal. Off of the show. We're, we're on. I like your moccasins. Thank you. I wear these pretty much every day. Anybody that knows me, I'm, this is kind of my go to shoe. Wow. Yeah, Thank let's you. turn the lights on for those moccasins. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see my moccasins? I'm worried that people can't see those shoot. moccasins. <laughs> so Zach, you're a big, uh, you're a big tough guy. Um, you uh, you play sports? A uh, long time ago. In you're high a school. football player, yeah. Yeah. offensive lineman. How many yep. moons ago? Uh, many moons ago. He looks like Jeff Tate. Yeah. Yes, he does. I don't know who that is. Yeah. He's a comedian. Okay, yeah. I'll look him up. Definitely. Uh, a handful of people are like, yeah, you nailed that one, Todd. <laughs> So, Zach, tell us more about you. What else? Um, I just got back from directing a youth camp in Wisconsin for two and a half weeks. Creepy. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean exactly? Um, so I used to be a counselor, which is normal camp counselor stuff, and now I'm just in charge of the counselors, which means I have less interaction with the children and more paperwork, basically. Is you wow, that's exactly what Jerry Sandusky's situation is. <laughs> that sounded like a court order situation. Yeah. More you paperwork, less interacting with children. Yeah. I actually uh, telecommute. I don't show up on site. I just all over the you, place. You, you still doing jokes. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. You get nervous. You directed a youth camp. Who did you award best boy grip? Best what? It's a movie term. Never mind. I'm sorry. Even I didn't get that. I've been in movies. <laughs> wait, you have to wait. wait for the credits. Okie dokie, Walter. I don't know what's going on here. Um, so, uh, so Zach, you're a, you're a, you're a, you a, in a relationship? I am not. No? How no. long have you been single for? A while. Probably four or five years. Yeah? When's the last time you, uh, you, you were with, uh, romantic with a woman? Uh, maybe a month ago. Yeah? What was that? That was off a dating app or something like that? Nope. Somebody I know locally. A friend type. Just a person I know. Yeah. No. Oh, that's it. You pegged a guy? No. Did. Oh. No. He came over for free. It was no big deal. Ah, yeah. uh, I like your style. Hell yeah. You built him a little a, a bed. <laughs> bed. Built a bed. Yeah, we bartered. We bartered. Heck yeah. My goodness. So, um... Interesting stuff, man. You ever make furniture for uh, for um, someone in trade of something? 
other than a comedy lesson? Uh, uh, yeah. About? Yeah, I uh, got tickets to Dave Matthews Band box tickets, and I built somebody a table just this last year. Wow. You built a table, and you got to see Dave Matthews Band. Yeah. Wow. How cool is that? It was a partial trade. I made money as well, but uh, yeah. Oh. You said, I'll take part of the money in Dave Matthews. Box <laughs> seats? Is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, like towards the front, right behind the pit. Okay. Nice little uh, boxed off. You got a waitress and all that good Who stuff. Who here has box seats tonight for this? <laughs> like, what, w- what would be the box seat section of, uh, of this show? <laughs> um, probably like right here, based on the setup. It'd probably be like six or eight boxes right here in the front. How was the Dave Matthews show? It was good. I enjoy it, yeah. Was it um, long? Uh, yeah, it's usually like an hour and a half for his portion. That's it? Yeah, but there's other... He must yeah. have been in a bad mood that day. <laughs> he just seems like a guy who would play for five hours. No, nah, there's, there's noise, or, noise ordinance at the place he plays near my town, so he's got to be done by like 10.30 or 11. Oh, man, so. he must have been relieved. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. You can't play Crash after 10 p.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was there ever anything happen when you were counseling the kids at camps that, uh, that was interesting? You ever walk in on them doing anything creepy or anything like that? Oh, man, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, I'll tell you one from this year. Yeah. I, I walked out of the cabin to go uh, shower and stuff. The kids were laid down ready to go to bed, and they weren't asleep yet. It's the oldest boys. They're like 13 to 15. They're messing around and yeah or as you call them the good ones yeah Yeah. the clean good ones the uh, fast learners yes yes they started drumming on their bellies making music all in sync then one of the guys was like all right all right that's enough we got to go to bed and the other guy chirps in and he goes you know we should call ourselves the fappening and they all started laughing and they start pounding and humping the bunks and doing this this noise right and i let it get quiet again and i said uh yeah, you guys should go on tour. And none of them knew I was standing outside the cabin. And they all silenced, complete silence. Didn't say a word the rest of the night. Wow. Which is kind of fun. They're like, oh, my God, there's a bear outside of the cabin yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's nice. That's a nice joke. <laughs> well, Zach. Uh, Zach. What, where do you live again? Pendleton, Indiana, between here and Indianapolis. Is there anybody here from Fort Wayne, Indiana? If, you're, if you live in <laughs> Fort Wow. Wow, there's like six people here from this city that we're in. This is incredible. This is what happens when you do a festival in Fort Wayne. You get people from all the hillbilly bumpkin cities to just... It's like what they did in Charlottesville. It's like a call to arms of, uh, of all the suburban uh, locals that know about that thing. Okie dokie. Uh, <laughs> so, um, Zach Garner, congratulations. Thank you were you. fun. Thank Heck you. yeah, there he goes. Have a great night. Heck yeah. All right. Keep going. We're, all, we're almost getting there. Something's about to happen here. I can feel it. Oh, shit. Okay, this looks like an interesting name. Put your hands together for Taylor Futter Connect. Wow, Taylor Futter Connect. Taylor. Here he is. Taylor Futter Connect. Holy shit. That was my younger brother that went first. Let's give it up for him. He did horrible. Uh, he told me before the show, he said, hey, uh, I got a little bit prepared, but I'm just going to wing it like I did college and the rest of my life. Um, get right back into it. I uh, can't make my girlfriend come. Um, that's pretty appropriate. Uh, it's kind of like going gambling with her at the casino, uh, except she never wins. Um, we both still smell like the casino. Uh, we almost had fun, but there's just no orgasm there at the end, you know. And orgasms aren't necessarily your significant other's responsibility. I understand that. It's more about getting to know yourself, knowing what gets you, turns you on, gets you off. But that doesn't make her come at the end of the day, and that's been problematic. Um, at least for my uh, fuck confidence. So, um. She still tells me she loves me, though. So I guess, I guess from, that, from that aspect, I can't blame her or discredit her. That's all I got. Thank there you. There you go. Taylor Futterconnect. I definitely... Okay. Okay, Walter. My God. Um, well, I definitely... I wasn't sure if you were really his brother, but then I saw that you have a similar... Unprepared performing styles. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Actually, absolutely sure you're brothers. 
I did I did write some stuff out, and it's much better if I could remember it. Um, yeah, I even good. tried it on the way down here a couple times. Oh you goodness. tried it on the way here? Is he really oh, your brother, yeah. that guy? No, he really is my youngest brother. Okay, I mean, when he does you, look exactly like you. Yeah, when you say you tried it on the way here, that means like what? In the in the like pickup truck that you guys came in? <laughs> we drove separate, but I do have a pickup truck. So you were by yourself in your pickup truck, rehearsing, going over the jokes that you had prepared? Reading what's actually on my lock screen on my phone, yes. And, and what you did tonight wasn't what's on the lock screen on your phone. Or it sort of is, but you couldn't quite remember the punchlines? That'd be accurate, Is there yeah. something you want to look at your phone? You want to reference uh, perhaps something that, uh, that you missed? A couple things uh, I acknowledged. Uh, you said casino so many times that I noticed this uh, European mailman getting very excited for some reason. A lot of my family owns casinos. <laughs> well, that's a Native American thing. That's a very European thing. I don't. I've never heard of a European casino. You've never or... been to a European casino? Have no. you been to Las Vegas? <laughs> yes. Well, there you go. We own all of the strip. N- no, wait, no. My people own all of the strip. Europeans. Yes. <laughs> okay. Are those are those Donald Trump Europeans? Is that hey. one of the things from your lock screen? No, hey, it's not. No, could, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Would I be able to read his lock screen and yeah. see what we can do? Yeah, you read his lock screen. Here he you is. You guys should go on tour as the Bomb Brothers. I, it literally says I seven times. I can't make my girlfriend come. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, let's try this one. Here we go. Now orgasms during sex aren't always your significant other's responsibility. I think most of that is knowing yourself and what turns you on and gets you off. <laughs> but I still can't make her come. That's the, uh, yeah. All right, let's see. I like that he said at the end of the day, I can't make her come. It's like, wow, you, it's taken all day, you're right. I don't know. She tells me she loves me, dot, dot, dot. Ah, there you go. Okay, so let me ask you this. Taylor, have you ever asked her if she's come before? Um, actually, w- the issue she has is she had, a in- she had an injury in soccer and had surgery, and she thinks it fucked with her, the neurological... No, no, it didn't. That's impossible. Yeah. That's simply impossible. That's very nice of her to say. So that, anytime but. you want to use that as an excuse, just know that she's lying to That's you. Fair. Let's That's check fair. in with Walter. I'm going to change his European name to Dick Don't Work. Oh, well, again, that's Native American as fuck. And uh, what's the injury, though? What, w- she, she dislocated her hip to the point where she had to go in and get surgery done. Like, it's... Yeah, did they go in... They, did, they, clitoris, did they make like the, the incision left. through her vagina? <laughs> they did not. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. <laughs> it's, you can't give her an orgasm. Uh, could she come before the surgery? And she actually struggles doing it on her own. Right. So she can make herself come. So it's definitely not from the soccer injury. Right? She can, but it's not all the time. Does she know you're talking sure. about this in public? No, absolutely not. <laughs> when she finally does come, does she go, go? <laughs> it's a soccer uh, and slide. Soccer reference. What do you do for a living? I actually work in sales and RV industry. In the RV industry? Get the fuck out of here. What the hell's going on? I got a better one for you. The the RV industry clearly is big in Indiana because everybody's trying to get out of Indiana and then they end up having to come back because of a sick relative. And then so you have to just end up going back and forth. So it's like, God damn it. I wish I had a house that was just slightly bigger than the one I live in and that I could move around. I'm going to get a goddamn RV. Can I ask the golden retriever guy a question? You're gonna you're about to ask an audience member an R V yeah. question? That, sure, that, absolutely. That's what stuck with you from his entire set was the golden retriever bit. Alright, I guess it's working. Keep doing it. <laughs> was was that company that your dad worked for for thirty eight years, Norcold? Whoa, that's crazy. You recognize his a, father by seeing him? You recognize the one company that does what that company does? <laughs> they, 
believe it or not. Was there like 800 really companies that make RV refrigerators? <laughs> also, that's a question you could have just walked up and asked them. <laughs> that's not for the stage. <laughs> he it's wanted very sacred up here. He wanted, to be he wanted some kind of response from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I have the answer that I'm definitely going <laughs> to get this question. Yes? Yes. Audience wowed. Uh, so um, sell me an RV. Try to pitch me, uh, sell me an RV right now, and uh, let's see how good you are at selling an RV. Tony, what will... Tony, because honestly, you? I would love an RV. I think if I got an RV, you know, I like, we tour a lot. We tour with a big group of people. And uh, if we had an RV, potentially I could use that, right, as basically a fancy tour bus. Well, I don't know that you'd want a big RV. You guys travel around from city to city. Wouldn't you want somebody that drives around in, I don't know, a Class C, maybe a, maybe we don't a know the classes. conversion, <laughs> uh, like a Mercedes where you guys could watch tape, yeah. write, write notes. Watch tape? Write jokes. <laughs> That's that's a reference from yeah. Uh, we can, uh, will oh, you be okay. our will you be our driver? Yeah. Wow. Cool. Can can you can you make your girlfriend come? Ah, oh, there you go. There you go. I can't I can't make her to make her come, but I can ask her to come. No, but you came to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Is your girlfriend here tonight? She's not. Okay. No. What if she you slowly c- slinked her hand <laughs> in the back? You couldn't like even make yes. her come here. That's incredible. It's mind-boggling. There's it's a lot of come double entendres here tonight. <laughs> wow. So um, have you tried... Uh, let me ask you this. How long have you been with your girlfriend? Eight months. Eight months. And uh, you uh, perform oral sex on her? As often as she'll let me. As often as she'll let you. Ooh, she, she doesn't seem like fun at all. Uh, what kind it, of woman complains about getting her pussy eaten? It sounds like you've tried everything. Have you tried letting me make her come? <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> Walter. <laughs> Walter, what do you, uh, do you have any... My wife's been dead for 30 years. <laughs> I need this. Do you do... Walter, do you have any special things that you do in the bedroom, like hang a dream catcher over yourself or anything like that? Or uh, Well, no, I just uh, play this game of peekaboo with my tongue that's uh, called in and out of the mail slot. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah, they squirt every time. Oh, oh, my God. That is unbelievable. And then when the flag goes up again, that means I, I can go back down there. Wow. Well, Taylor, uh, you got on stage tonight. You and your brother can both have uh, uh, really bust each other's balls yeah. about what happened here. I love that you came out and dissed him right away. Just I, like, like, I like that you both, just for your own relationship with your brother, you both did equally poorly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your pa- be sure to tell your parents how, uh, how disappointed they should be yeah. in both of you. Equally. So good yes. news, folks. Uh, <laughs> neither of us are going to be comedians. <laughs> but, Taylor, you take the jokes well. Yeah, and you, you have a good sense well. of humor. And, uh, you know, you're a good-looking guy. You're selling RVs. I mean, you look like uh, probably the most uh, successful person on the stage uh, so far tonight. It didn't go successfully, hey. but you look like it did. I can't succeed in the bedroom either currently. So Wow. That you're works. still... You just Don't w- end it. Let's not end on a sad note. Yeah, you just <laughs> just won't let it die. Even with us, the, the the finish isn't happening. Like it's just like we just can't bring this thing to a climax yeah, with you. Something's wrong with this package. Ah, uh, we all cool. have a soccer injury though, so don't worry about it. Oh yeah, there he goes, Taylor Futter Connect. Futter Connect. <laughs> yep. What do you guys think? Go to the bucket one more time. Uh, All right. Uh, Let's see what happens here. Okay. Let's try this. Uh, Put your hands together for Brian Porcell, everyone. Brian Porcell. Here we go. Brian Porcell. Here he is. Live in the flesh, Brian Porcel. 
One more time for Brian, everybody. He's your final comedian of the night, of the day. I thought Antifa was a new show on BET. <laughs> Tonight at 8 o'clock, Antifa. Back up, motherfucker. Huh. I've been called retarded. It's just because I drool a lot and like to lick windows. <laughs> Obesity, heart disease, and diabetes runs in my family. Probably because no one runs in my family. I think pedophiles would be good doormen because what would be a better bouncer than someone that can spot an underage drinker? I notice a black man going door to door, stealing people's mail. So I took matters into my own hands. That postman outfit wasn't fooling anyone. Hold on, wait, what? <laughs> I, okay. I didn't understand your racist joke, continue. Yeah. No, go ahead. Uh, so sort of like, uh, do it again. Hold on, wait. Not you, Walter. Uh, Brian. So I saw a black man yeah. stealing mail door to door. Uh huh. So I took matters into my own hands. Uh huh. The postman outfit was not fooling anyone. So as I explained to the cops, they laughed, but I had to do community service. So now I follow that postman around and make sure he doesn't steal anyone's mail. Oh my God. Oh, that was. <laughs> I just tried so hard to wow. figure out what the fuck. Uh, it was actually was a better joke when you just did the first half. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a terrible joke. Brian, I like your style, man. Uh, even though things didn't go that well, uh, I, I like the courage uh, that you have behind your jokes. Uh, I thought the Antifa thing was so stupid that it was great. <laughs> I think it was like brilliantly dumb. I, I saw Walter uh, laugh at that one, too. I've been called retarded. You have well, been. It was. It was. What was great was the placement of that joke right after that one. Is is the Antifa joke, and then he goes, "Some people have called me retarded." I'm like, that's what I was just thinking. Is that true? Uh, is it true that you drool? Yeah. Is bad. it? Tr- it's like I was going to apologize because it might be like a Gallagher set because I. What? I, I accidentally like spit on people. Well, oh. As I talk. Oh, I see. Wow. I apologize if I get anybody. Oh, it's okay. You're okay, Brian. Yeah. Everything's right. good. Thank you. Uh, Brian, you're a big guy representing the Pink Floyd. You have a fanny pack on. Uh, I do. Is, that a, is there anything in your fanny pack? Uh, there might be. Well, uh, there's only one thing to do, and that's to play a round of what's in that fanny pack. <laughs> yeah. As an avid fan of the show, um, I kind of be- uh, came prepared, even though I didn't know I was going to get on stage. Of course, yes. No one ever knows that I they're like going to get on stage. You came prepared. That was funny. He just has Wait. a gun and he shoots he is, all of us. He's taken the fanny pack off completely. Wow, this is very interesting. He's taken the fanny pack off. He's putting on a blonde wig. He's taking something out of plastic and putting it on his stomach. Uh, it says baby on board. And uh, what, uh, w- what is this? I would like to do an Amy Schumer impersonation for you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. I'd love to see this uh, Amy Schumer impression. I am laying down the gauntlet. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to, I know this is unorthodox, but I'm trying to get a golden ticket from Willy Wonka, so. Oh, my God. <laughs> Brian, it's official. You're retarded. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is incredible. However, I will say this. You do look exactly like Amy Schumer. Uh, it's quite, no, it's quite incredible. I appreciate uh, that. I'd like to pitch a couple screenplays to you, if I could. Yes. As you know... Is, there, is this you and Amy, Amy Schumer? Schumer. Uh, yes, Amy Schumer. okay, Amy. Yeah. Okay, I, could, I guess I could get into Amy Schumer's voice. I'm sorry. Well, Tony. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I'd right. like to pitch a couple screenplays to you right Welcome now. to another episode of Burning Bridges here on uh, Kill Tony. I can find. Uh, I know someone that will never be an executive producer of this show. No, I'm just kidding. She never would have been anyway. Uh, the, the first screenplay is about my 50-year-old struggle with my weight. It's okay, to- okay. <laughs> this it's, is to- it's totally original. <laughs> I'm going to call it The Life of Pi. Oh, totally I original. You know me, Amy Schumer. Okay. Hey, can you tell the Antifa joke again and get the <laughs> hell off stage? <laughs> also, I have another one. Yeah. It's where I confess that I have stolen people's jokes before. Yeah. Oh. Well, she didn't write them herself. It was Louis C.K. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is oh. kidding. I'm sorry. I didn't stay in character very long, did I? Anyhow, okay. I finally confess that I've stolen jokes from other comedians to a couple <laughs> older men, and I'm going to call that screenplay Secondhand Lines. Wow, Brian. It's, uh, <laughs> was there anything else in your, uh, in your fanny pack? Uh, there should have been a cigar, but uh, Amazon did not ship it to me. It said, your package may be lost. That's why you should always trust U.S. mail. Hell yeah. Well, Brian, uh, wow. very, very interesting. I love your, uh, I love your risk taking. It's, uh, you know, I mean, you definitely went for it up here. Look at you, Brian. You guys enforce the one minute rule. That's huh? like you go one minute and then you can do it. Seven minute encore in character. <laughs> <laughs> Seven minute back. I had encore. a uh, three pronged attack. I had a s- song that I had written. Oh, you're not done yet? No, it's okay. I, I think I'm going to be done. I have to do a show in Indianapolis tonight. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Brian, uh, we're going we're going to uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to uh, we're going to let you go. Okay. Brian Purcell everybody. Thank we you. love him. Brian Purcell. You guys think we should get one woman up here to close the show. We haven't had a lady all night. I'm not going to count Amy Schumer as a uh, as a female comedian. So let's knock out one more. Let's see if there is a single woman that signed up. Wow, maybe, maybe, maybe we didn't even have a woman. Wow, that's crazy. Everyone just wants to say it looks like they're all from one bowling team. <laughs> For the podcast listeners, a male in the back goes, I got titties. Wow. The few, the proud. This might be a first we haven't had a The people who signed up for Kill Tony in Fort Wayne. That's crazy. Oh, my God. Is there a female in this room that signed up? No, if you ask like that, somebody's going to tell his girlfriend to try it, and it's going to go horrible. So I'm stopping that right there. No, a woman didn't sign up. Well, pick out a girly name. Did a, did a person of, of color, perhaps, sign up for the show? This looks like an interesting... I mean, <laughs> Native American, who says that? A person of color. What? This looks like an interesting name. Let's try it. There's, no matter what happens, the show ends with this. Make some noise for Trevor from Wakanda. <laughs> Trevor from Wakanda. Here he comes. This is one wacky episode of Kill Tony. Here he is. Here's Trevor. Give it up, Fort Worth! I can't believe I'm on Kill Tony. I feel like Red Band when he met Tokyo Cunt Punch. You guys said you were Kill Tony. Here, uh. My bad. Uh, s- Sorry. No, here, use, use that one. I think the mic went out in anticipation of what's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> The mic just killed itself. Uh. My bad. So, uh, as he said, I'm from Wakanda, Wakanda, Illinois. And if you don't know where that is, that's cool because no one does. Anyways, that fucking sucked. Sorry. Where are my dog people at? Yeah, come on, dog people. You know why I love dogs? I love dogs a lot more than I do humans because they're softer, they always stay by your side, and they can't report sexual assault. (laughs) Oh, my God. Wow. This has been an episode filled with uh, bad jokes, bad tattoos. Um, 
and uh, really just everything uh, uh, everything was uh, pretty uh, that was I mean look at you that is the most that is the most on the nose outfit <laughs> yeah Wife beater with camouflage pants. A Budweiser wife beater, <laughs> uh, camo check, pants. Check. You're you're basically a, Thank you. a version of everyone that got pulled out of the bucket tonight all at once. Uh, just a big blob of pure white trash. Um, it's like it's like if Fort Wayne threw up a person. <laughs> yeah, this is incredible. Um, I'm glad that you made it here. You made the long the long drive from Pontiac Street to be here tonight. That's a local reference. Are you from the 06? The Are 06? you one of the garbage people? <laughs> Are you one of the bad garbage people here in town? Yeah, I heard you guys have bad garbage people. Is that true? Um, are you working on the roundabout? Okay. <laughs> no. What do you do for work? Uh, I work at a welding factory. A what? A welding factory. Welding. Heck yeah. What are you guys welding? RVs? <laughs> Mm. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not from Indiana. Oh, uh, Wisconsin? No, uh, Illinois. Illinois. Chicagoland. Well, just outside of Chicago? That's interesting. Okay. What's your family? What are your parents like? My parents are, yeah. you know, really... My parents are uh, about to turn 70. Oh, my God. Really? So they had you late Are in they life. twins? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I'm not from Indiana. <laughs> Wow, Todd Berry elegantly just called you an incest baby. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Man, it's so interesting. Tell us something interesting about you, Uh, Trevor. (laughs) (laughs) What is it? Trevor from Wakanda? Yes. Uh Something interesting about me? Yeah. Anything you've ever accomplished? Maybe you have a trophy of some kind, some type of hot dog eating co- or jalapeno popper eating competition that you once won. Like, Why do you assume I eat jalapeno poppers? Wow, Why? you're actually offended by that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the offensive joke. Oh, uh, something interesting about me? I don't know. I like to shoot guns. Um, no. Oh, I'm in the military. You were in the military? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? What branch? U.S. Army Reserve. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's very interesting. Would you ever go anywhere or overseas or anything? Uh, Kuwait and Iraq in 2016. Wow. You're a goddamn American hero, sir. Now it all makes sense. Heck, yeah. Wow. Can we still insult you now that we, you've told us that? <laughs> <laughs> or is it going to seem it. disrespectful? <laughs> wow. This is, uh, this is the whitest episode of this show we've ever had. <laughs> Have you, you know? done stand-up before today? Uh, yeah, this is my 24th time. Really? Mm-hmm. Let's count it as just 23. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. I fucking slam that dude, man. Okay, I'm going to send you off. Trevor from Wakanda, everybody. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Now, I know I said that was it, but this is truly it. We're going to watch 60 seconds from a guy. My, one of my good friends back there, Trey, has been pointing at this innocent black man in the back of the room for the last five minutes. Uh, he signed up earlier, right? But he didn't get pulled out of the bucket. So let's just do it. Just so that things are a little bit different. Just so that we have one person here that isn't like everybody else all night long that works in RVs and welds RVs or builds RVs or parts of RVs or fucking RV, RV, RV. Put your hands together. 60 seconds from Isaiah Gray. Here we go. And then this is it. This is it. Uh, Yo, I'm not really much of a comic. I used to be a rapper. I used to be in a rap group called NWA. And we had some good hits. Uh... Y'all ain't heard of niggas with autism, so I guess that's uh, harder for y'all. I don't know, it's hard being a black autistic dude. Like, I know why I'm autistic, though. Uh, it's because my mom was a sinner, and, uh, and she got me vaccinated, you know? And that runs me out, because, like, like I'm, all, I'm a grown man that's socially awkward when I could have just been a real cool baby. Like, I would have been a dead baby, but still, like, I would have been cool for a little bit. Like now, like yeah, I'm vaccinated. I ain't got like polio, so I can walk around. But am I going anywhere really? <laughs> All right. 
don't know. Uh, I'll just, okay, I'm gonna, I'll just uh, tell y'all this joke my dad told me then. Uh, it was real, when I was like 11 years old, he told me, uh, I'll just tell it was real corny though. Uh, I love you, son, and I'll be back. <laughs> there he is, Isaiah Gray. The best set of the night by far. Unbelievable. That was the one. That was great, Isaiah. And I'm the crazy old man who asked for a person of color to come up to the stage. <laughs> Save the day. Heck yeah. You did it. You, you absolutely killed it. It's so cool. Right. Obviously, they were able to get Coolio at this festival. That's so <laughs> exciting. Uh, Isaiah, have you done, you, you do stand up comedy, right? Yeah. That was incredible. How long have you been doing it? Like five years. Five years. Well, fucking awesome, man. Thanks so much for being here and uh, closing out the show. Anything else crazy we need to know about you before we end this episode? Any fun facts about Isaiah Gray we need uh, to know? Nah, man. I'm, I'm unemployed and I ain't doing shit in my life. So. Unemployed and you're not doing <laughs> shit with your life. There you go. a job. Yeah. I got fired from a restaurant for like taking too long to take a drug test. And ah, taking too long to do a drug test. Well, anyone who is about to offer you a job is not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on Twitter or Instagram? <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I don't use them much. But I'm trying <laughs> I'm to help you out, man. Uh, uh, I'm on some other shows here tonight in Let's Fest. I this guess. comes out a week or two after we leave. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. I'm on uh, uh, Isaiah Gray, I-S-I-H-G-R-A-Y on Twitter and Action Blackson on Instagram. Uh, be- here, you know what? I'll tell you what, because that's not as climactic as I'd like it to be. Why don't we end this thing with a bang? We have a second Kill Tony here tonight at uh, 9 or 9.30. How about you come back and you have a guaranteed spot on that show? Cool? cool yeah. There you go. Isaiah Gray, everybody. Ending of the show. Fort Wayne, how loud can this place get for the great Todd Berry, huh? We love you, Todd. Todd uh, has the Todd Berry podcast. It's available everywhere. Spicy Honey is streaming live on Netflix, and he has amazing, amazing live dates coming up all at ToddBerry.com. Some of them are, are, are it's, uh, stand-up shows, and some of the crowd work uh, uh, only I shows. I think it's all stand-up shows. Oh, all stand-up shows. Sorry. That's ToddBerry.com, and uh, check out the Todd Berry podcast, and, of course, Spicy Honey on Netflix. Todd, thank you so much. It is such Thanks an honor. Me, thank fun. you. Uh, how about a hand for the great Jeremiah Watkins, everybody? The self-titled album, Reagan and Watkins, is available after the show. He's going to be selling them and signing them for you. And so are the Kill Tony pins. And uh, don't forget, we're, I'm doing stand-up in Miami and Key West and uh, the Hollywood Improv. Red Band's doing San Diego. And uh, we're doing Kill Tony's coming up in Dallas, Sacramento, San Francisco, D.C., and Australia. So uh, that's that. Uh, how many of you are coming to the 9 o'clock show? Or, yeah, a lot of you. There you go. Well, we'll see you guys there. Thank you so much for coming out. We love you guys. Good night. See you guys. Red Band.